Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. In Chapter 8, Dwight Lee and I introduce uh, cost structures of a firm. And we begin with the introduction of marginal cost. Uh, marginal cost is the additional cost of producing an additional uh, unit. And what we want to know is the structure of marginal cost over a range of output. We introduce this concept by talking about uh, tomato planting. And we do that because I grew up on a farm and I had to plant uh, tomatoes. I know there are four tasks involved in planting tomatoes. Uh, somebody's got to dig the hole, somebody's got to drop the plant in the hole, somebody's got to water uh, the tomato roots, and somebody's got to cover up those, those roots. You can imagine that if you have one person uh, doing all four tasks, and that person will have to go down the row uh, digging the holes, return to the beginning of the row uh, to uh, pick up the tomato plants, drop the tomato plants in, in the holes, then return to the beginning again, get a bucket of water, pour some water in each hole, and then return again to uh, uh, begin covering up uh, the roots of the tomato plants and mounding the dirt up around the tomato plants. If you have one person uh, doing that, there's going to be a lot of time wasted in uh, going back to the original start of the, of the row and uh, changing tools or changing uh, tasks. Uh, if you have two, then you can divide up the task, and you can imagine that the two can be more productive because not as much time is wasted going back to the beginning of the row. If you add four, then you can get optimum production because you can have a team going down the row, one person digging the hole, one person um, uh, dropping the plant in the hole, one person pouring water, and one person following uh, by covering up the roots of the tomato uh, plants. So as you go from one person to two persons to three persons to four person uh, team, you can imagine that the uh, team becomes more productive. That is, the additional output of the second worker is going to be more than the uh, first, the additional output of the third worker is going to be more than the second, and the additional output of the uh, fourth worker uh, can be more than the, uh, than the third uh, worker. As, in fact, you have an uh, increase in the additional output of, of these workers, you can also imagine that the marginal cost of producing tomatoes is falling as you increase the number of, of workers. But we know that as you add successive units of labor to a fixed quantity of land, at some point, uh, the law of diminishing uh, returns is going to kick in. This law simply states that uh, as, the, as you add successive units of one resource, call it labor, to a fixed quantity of another resource, call it land, uh, there is going to be some point beyond which the additional output of each additional worker is going to uh, diminish. That is, the marginal output is going to diminish. And if the marginal output of additional workers is, going, is diminishing, uh, and you're paying all those workers the same wage, then it stands to reason that the additional cost of producing uh, additional tomatoes uh, will, in fact, uh, go up. Now, we can show this the cost structure that we have deduced for marginal cost by returning to a, a graph. We know that as you add successive units, one, two, three, four workers, the marginal cost is going to diminish. But at some point, you're going to get a diminishing marginal product, which means you're going to get an increasing uh, marginal uh, cost. We know that there is going to be a point of diminishing marginal product, put it right there, uh, simply because, uh, it, simply because uh, if, if in fact the additional cost did not eventually uh, rise, then it means that you could grow the world's food uh, tomato stock uh, on, on this fixed quantity of land. And the reason is that we have a ratio here, labor to land. And what we're doing is we're upping the amount of labor to the amount of land. And um, uh, as you up the land, labor to land, you, you get declining marginal costs. Well, we know it's got to go up uh, at uh, some point. Otherwise, you could just hold the labor constant and decrease the amount of land and get output, which means that if you didn't have increasing marginal cost, if you never had diminishing returns, uh, you could just uh, grow the world's uh, tomato supply in a, in a flower pot, and that's not likely uh, to be the case. Well, so the marginal cost structure is going to be one of declining marginal cost due to benefits of specialization of, say, 
labor, and then diminishing returns, which is going to drive the cost up. Well, the question then becomes, what should a, um, uh, how much should a firm produce? Well, if a firm can charge price uh, P1, then this firm should, in fact, extend output up to a point like uh, Q1. And the firm should produce Q1 primarily because the firm gets a price of P1, call that $5. And uh, this $5 uh, price is greater than the marginal cost there. There's that big a gap, and of course there's that big a gap there, the marginal cost here, and uh, so forth. The firm should continue to expand in spite of the fact that marginal cost starts going up, because so long as there is a gap, a difference between the price of the good and the marginal cost of production, profits are going to be rising. So the profits will continue to rise up to this point. You don't go be, the firm should not go beyond uh, Q1 because the additional cost is greater than the, uh, than the price uh, of the good. Profits have got to be going down at that point. So the moral of this story is that a firm that can sell as many units as it wishes at a price of P1 should produce where uh, price is equal to uh, marginal cost. In this case, price is also equal to marginal revenue. That is, the additional revenue from selling this first unit is going to be $5. The additional revenue from selling the second unit is going to be $5. So the price is equal to marginal revenue. This, of course, means that um, a firm should produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And this is a very important rule in, in economics. That is, a firm should produce uh, at the margin, where marginal revenue uh, equals to marginal uh, cost. Now, this is going to be a rule of production that will be used uh, by firms no matter whether they're in a highly competitive market or a monopoly market. That is, the firm should produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. A monopoly's marginal revenue uh, struck curve will be different than that of, of a competitive firm, but nonetheless, the monopolist will produce where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. The comp highly competitive firm, the perfectly competitive firm, will do the same. The only difference uh, is that monopoly's marginal revenue structure is going to be different than that of a, of a highly competitive, perfectly competitive uh, producer. Uh, thank you for being with me.